With rich client-side applications becoming increasingly popular, a common question is should I use Rails if all I need it to do is provide a JSON API? Well, if you're faced with this question, check out the Rails API gem by Rails Cord member Santiago Passerino. The README here goes into detail and describes what Rails gives you that is useful if you're just building an API. Now, Rails is very modular, and this gem provides a generator for creating a streamlined Rails application that strips out everything that you might not need if all you're doing is building an API. Well, let's give this a try and see how it works in this episode. First, I'm going to install the gem called uh, Rails API. And next, because I'm running Ruby env, I need to run the rehash command to give me access to the binary. So now I can run the Rails API command provided by the gem to create a new application just like I would with the Rails command. I'll call it todo. So this command generates a streamlined application designed for providing an API. Let's take a closer look. One of the major differences you'll notice is that the app directory is much simpler. There's no views or assets directory here. And if you check out the application controller that is generated, it now inherits from action controller API which is quite a bit lighter weight than Action Controller Base. And I'll go into more detail on that later. Now, another major difference is inside of the gem file. You can see the Rails API gem is included in here, and there's no assets group. Now, the jQuery Rails gem is still here, but you can safely remove that. It won't be included in future versions of Rails API. Another change is how the generators work. For example, if I try generating some scaffolding here for a task model, and give it a name, it doesn't generate nearly as many files because it's not generating any templates or assets. So let me migrate the database here so we can use it. Now, if we take a look at the task controller that was generated by the scaffold, you can see that it's only rendering a JSON response. It's not designed to render an HTML view or user interface. It's just an API inside of this controller. So if we try visiting the tasks path through the browser, we just see the JSON output, which is an empty array because we don't currently have any tasks. Now, if we wanted to present a user interface for creating tasks and managing them, that is expected to be done in the public directory or even outside of the Rails application entirely. The Rails app just handles the API. So for the purposes of this application, I'm going to go into the public directory here and replace the contents of the default index file with one that will list out the tasks and allow me to create some with a dabble of JavaScript and some CSS all in line on this file. But of course you can structure it however you want. So going to the root of this application, I now have a to-do list page where I can add an item. So let's say paint the fence. And then when I add this, it's just going to add it to a list and I could even reload here and it's going to uh, fetch the item from the Rails application and display it in the list here. Now this is all done with some jQuery here with a call to get JSON to fetch the tasks and a call to post to create a task. Now I kept this example really simple, but you could go with a full uh, client-side framework such as Backbone.js if you wanted to. Next, I'm going to show you some of the things that the Rails API controller leaves out. Uh, let's say we want our API to respond in different formats, such as both XML and JSON. Normally in a Rails controller, we could add a respond to block with a format passed in here, and we could say both a JSON and a XML, and then have a little block in here which renders either one separately. So we'll just render XML in here. Now let's try this out. Now when I visit the tasks.xml path, I expect to see uh, some XML response, but it says undefined method respond to. So the Rails API controller is missing a number of features to make it lighter weight, but you can easily add them back if you need to. So here we just need to go into the tasks controller and include a module called action controller mime responds or we could include this directly into the application controller so that every controller has this respond to ability. And reloading the page, and now it works. We get our XML response. Now, if you check out the Rails API README, it gives you a list of modules that you might want to include. And you can see the MIME response module here for the respond to functionality. So you might want to include translations, HTTP basic, and so on. Still, that isn't the fullest of modules. If you want, you can check out the source code and compare the modules included in the Rails API controller with those in Action Controller Base. And if you included all the various modules from here, then you would basically duplicate the same functionality of Action Controller Base. But this way you can pick and choose exactly what you want. 
Now, sometimes you need to do more than just include a module into the controller. For example, going back to the readme here, it tells you if you want to add cookie support, you need to include the module and add in some rack middleware. So this brings up an important point. Not only does Rails API slim down the controllers, but the rack middleware stack as well. So if we go into our Rails application and run the rake middleware command, we'll get a list of middleware that is used. And this is noticeably shorter than a full Rails application. What's missing here, you might wonder? Well, I exported a list of both kinds of apps so we can run a diff on this for the API middleware and a full middleware stack. And so here you can see we're missing five pieces of middleware, method override, cookies, session, flash, and best standard support. Now, if you're wondering what this middleware does, check out episode 319 for details. Now, if we wanted to add back in some functionality such as the cookie support, we'll need to add the middleware and include the controller module. Now I'm going to add the cookies middleware back in through the application config file, and I'll just paste in the code for doing this. Now I think it's a good idea to try to maintain the same order that it is in the full stack, so I'm going to use middleware.insertAfter to add the cookies middleware after the query cache middleware, which is where it normally is. And then going into the tasks controller, I can add a line in here to include the action controller cookies module to get that cookie behavior in. Now you'll need to restart your app for the middleware to take effect, but then reloading the page here, and it doesn't work. I get an error saying helper method is not defined for the tasks controller. And this brings up an important point. Some modules depend on other modules, so in this case the cookies module depends on the helpers module existing, so you'll need to add that as well. And now reloading the page, and it works. Now you'll be able to interact with cookies just like you would in a full Rails app. Next, I want to talk about some other gems which can help you build a JSON API. Now I've covered both JBuilder and Rabble in previous episodes, and these gems will render JSON using view templates, which goes a little bit against the grain of Rails API, but still you can use them fine here. Let me show you using Rabble. You'll need to run the bundle command to install it, and one thing you'll notice, our app directory doesn't have a views directory, so we'll just need to make one because view templates are how Rabble works. So we'll need to make a views tasks directory and then a new file in here. And this should be called index.json.rabble. And here I'll just fill in the Rabble template telling it to render the tasks as a collection and the attributes should be uh, the ID and name attributes. And then going into the tasks controller, we need to change this JSON rendering behavior so that it renders out that template. Now in a normal full application, we could just remove this render call entirely and it will implicitly fall back to rendering a template. But in a Rails API app, this expects explicit rendering behavior. So we could say to render out the index template like this, but actually you could just remove this entirely and just call render without passing any arguments and it will render out the template matching that current action. Now you'll need to restart the app for it to pick up that views directory, but once you do, you can go to tasks.json and it will return the JSON response rendering it through Rabble. Now if you want implicit rendering back, you can include a module called implicit render, and that means we don't have to call the render method anymore, and if we had an XML template, we can just comment out this entire respond to block because it would detect the format and render the proper template automatically. And try this out by reloading this page, and it still works. So this is getting closer to a full Rails application here because we're doing implicit rendering of view templates. Now a good question to ask is, if I'm adding all of this functionality back in, is it still worth going with the Rails API gem? At this point, I would lean towards going with a full Rails app because we are doing view rendering and so on, even though we are just rendering an API. But it really comes down to each application's requirements and how much of the Rails stack you plan to use. Now one thing I haven't done is any performance or memory consumption tests to compare a Rails API app with a full application. If you want to do that, that'd be awesome. Just post in the comments to share it with others. Now before I go, I want to give another shout out to the Rails API readme. If you are making a JSON API, I highly recommend you read the section on why use Rails for JSON APIs. It goes into a lot of detail on what Rails does provide that you may not realize outside of HTML rendering. Well, that's it for this episode on Rails API. Thanks for watching. This week's pro episode is on Rails modularity. There I will show you how the smallest Rails application works, and then I'll cover how to whittle down a full Rails application stack into just what you need. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.